Hello and welcome back to Football League World TV. I'm, I'm your host, Alfie Burns, and today we've got a, a special show with the first Blackpool fan takeover of the season. <laughs> joining, joining me today, I've got, I've got Lee and Tom, two, two diehard Blackpool fans who, who are buoyant after a good weekend win at Middlesbrough. Firstly, Tom, how are you getting on? Yeah, very well, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. And what about you, Lee? Are you okay? Brilliant. Thank you. Really good. Yeah. Good. Good to this. Good stuff. So any Blackpool fans that we've got watching, you know, get in the comments and, and we'll try and answer as many as many questions as we can. Um, and we're going to get into things by looking at the season so far. So me and the lads have been discussing just off air briefly there how how it's probably a good time to have the first the first Blackpool show of the season after after a good weekend win and, and some good form this side of the September international break. At the minute, we've got we've got Neil Critchley's side in twentieth in the championship. They've got two wins, two draws, and four defeats from their opening eight fixtures, which leaves them with eight points on the board. I'll come to you first, Tom. Are you, are you happy with the return so far? Uh, maybe not happy, but at the same time, you know, not unhappy. It's it's, it's been a topsy turvy season. I don't think the four defeats paint the picture of how the season's so far panned out. Um, if you look at the results in isolation, I'm happy with a few of them and, and, and unhappy with the way we've performed in other matches. But, you know, I, I think Borough was a huge win. I think Lee will agree. But I think from now on, we need to kick on just before the, the next international break and, and see where it takes us. But it certainly could have been a lot worse, that's for sure. And what about you, Lee? Do you, do you echo Tom's thoughts there? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, happier, I would say the word was. Not happy. Um, we've been unlucky in, in a couple of games a couple of decisions have, have, have gone you know against us we started the season off um without a right back um we were after a player called jordan gabriel from nottingham forest and forest kind of just i don't know they were playing around all the way through the summer and we didn't sign him until the actual you know last final day of the transfer window we've got him now and we actually, we actually brought another lad in as well from Chelsea at the same time so now we've got two right backs but we were playing without a right back and we were getting um you know players were targeting our, our right back and it was causing us, us problems and it was we were crying out for it and we've been crying out for it all through the summer as well all through the pre-season all through the pre-season games had gone to so I think that was one of the reasons why we didn't get off to the greatest start that we you know we could have done but with a bit of luck we could have had a better start than we've had but uh, we seem to be kind of adjusting to the championship now it is quite a big step up it's a big step up and you know we know it's a big difference from league one and of course you know the first thing would be to just you know be safe i suppose you know we'll ho hopefully not get relegated but um you know it's it, it's looking a lot better and, and middlesbrough really did make you have some hope well beating fulham and middlesbrough you know both of those two two games have given us a bit of hope so I'll just stick with you, Lee. You say, mm. did you expect more or less what you've got in terms of the return or did you expect a little bit more in terms of points at this stage? I was expecting top of the league, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest, I kind of, at the start of the season, I, I was convinced we're going to double. You know, I'm convinced we're going to do a, do a double um, promotion. So I, I was a bit disappointed, to be honest. There's a couple of games that I've, I've been, you know, the home games, the two home games against Cardiff and Coventry, um, were both games that didn't, you know, there's a lot of contro controversy in both of those games, to be honest. And I, I better not start about referees and decisions because we all get them. But um, yeah, both of those games, Cardiff were, you know, really big, you know, really massive. You know, they came, they were like the old Arsenal, you know, they were like 10, you know, they just seemed huge players. And, uh, you know, we did okay. First off, we weren't so good. Second half, we were a lot better. And when we could have got a draw out of that game in, in Coventry, well, just don't even get me started about the goal that they scored, which was this goal with a handball that went to, went to hit his hand and hit his head and went in sort of things. He's running across. So, you know, they beat us 1 0. So, a few little things didn't go our way there. But um, anyway, we've, we're adjusting. We're adjusting, aren't we, Tom? We're adjusting. And what we about are. you, Tom? Did, did, you, did you expect anything more, anything less from, from the opening eight games? Uh, well, the Covent, the, as Lee said, the, the Coventry is a game was a bit controversial, but I think slowing it down, it does hit his head, part of his arm. I think we we would deserve to be one down in that game, but 
what we lacked in that game, like we said defensively, we were absolute shambles. Like Bambi on ice, Keo was horrendous. Um, we just we just didn't perform going uh, when they attacked us. But at the same time, Lavery, Yates, um, we've had the ball in the box six or seven times, and I expected a draw out of that game with the chances we had, especially Lavery mm. going through one on one. Uh, Yates having the ball like a few yards away from the keeper. I think last season he goes around the keeper or makes a better decision. Instead, he just sort of flutters and and doesn't get the ball across. But Cardiff played us off the park. Um, yeah, Bristol played us generally. They dominated the game because we didn't really have a central midfield that would fit. We're playing Reese James there, which was just a disaster. So we got to draw out of that game. So you weren't expecting to beat Fulham. I weren't expecting to draw against Bournemouth at 2-2. Um, and to be fair, after the first half at Borough, I called us relegation fodder um, in my Guinness fueled <laughs> mind. Um, but it I was, was the same. It was, was horrendous same. first half. And mm. if you see their goal, talking of referees, it's I've, I've looked at about 16 different stills. And, and, and none of them are offside. And none of them are onside. So yeah. a poor decision. I don't know how he's not seen it, but the second half at Borough just showed us what we can do and how we can control a game. And as we said before, Neil Warnock sides are usually organised and and tough to beat. And yeah, a bit of luck for the for the second goal, but it's a decent ball in finally from Blackpool. And you know we got a deserved win. So um, no, I suppose is, is is the answer in short. But hopefully we can kick on from here because we can't afford to always be poor in games because in the first half on Saturday we probably could have been 3-0 down to a better side as we found out against Bournemouth when they went two up yeah yeah so you've you both sort of touched on there I think the form since the, the September international break has been a real real plus and you just listening to you both talk it, it's clear that it's it's lifted spirits all around the club I mean you, you've picked up the scalp of Fulham which you know I'm not sure too many teams will do this this uh, this season and you've had a good turnaround win against Middlesbrough and, and your only defeats come to Huddersfield obviously quite a quick fire three goals from them last mm-hmm. Tuesday to get a 3-0 win and we'll stick with you here Tom you know did did you see it coming and, and, and what sort of changed since the September international break I don't I don't think with Neil Critchley's side there too like dissimilar in terms of performances like the Coventry game in spells we were brilliant and uh, he he tries to work out each opponent differently and he doesn't care what kind of teams he puts out so I don't know if I was expecting anything from the international break in terms of the turnaround in form what I do, do expect is a, is a decent performance and, and in, in, on the whole um, the Fulham game for the 90 minutes was fantastic. Borough for 45 and Huddersfield was absolutely horrendous. We just didn't create much. And the goals, the second goal gilded us off a bit, but we just yeah. we just didn't create enough in that match to be better. So not exactly expecting the change of form, but just it's just good to see now we've got a team playing in the positions that they are playing in, i.e. the right back, which Lee mentioned earlier, um, just to see us play better and well-structured. And hopefully we can just be a bit more decisive on the, on their attack, on the attack in the next few games. And what about you, Lee? Do you think much has changed? Obviously, you've mentioned, you know, the right back situation. Is has that been sort of a catalyst to to this sort of form since September's international break? Yeah, the right back. Um, there's been a couple of things. Medine has finally um, he was left out of the squad for some unknown reason. They kind of said he wasn't fit, and then within a few days of them actually leaving him out of the squad, he was suddenly fit and raring to go. So whether that was a kick up the backside he needed, I don't know, because he's been injured for a long time. We were lacking a. a a big striker, Jerry Yates plays better with a big striker with him. He, you know, he's, he's not a tall striker himself and we had no height up front. A lot of balls were being knocked up high and just, you know, obviously meet and drink to any, you know, centre half. Um, I, I was the same as Tom as well. At half time, I, well, one, I was really angry about the offside goal, but I was, um, you know, saying to Jane of her around me that, you know, this, you know, we're, we're getting the look of a going down side is what my halftime thoughts were. I thought, you know, these sort of goals like that, where they're just miles offside, these are the sort of things that happen when you're bottom of the league, you know, the look just doesn't go your way. And then in the second half, we hit the post, you know, it came out and we put a ball ball in and it just came off the post. And I thought, we're going down. You know what I mean? This is it. This is the type of stuff that goes against you when, when you're bottom of the league. And then all of a sudden, you know, we turned it around. We actually scored two goals from set pieces, which is which which has been our Achilles heel, hasn't it, Tom? Do you not think set set pieces? We either can't defend them, you know, we've been very suspect to corners and free kicks coming in, and and, uh, and our own set set pieces have been dreadful, but unbelievable. You know, we score from two set pieces. So so yeah, I'm um I'm thinking that it's just you know that there is a glimmer of hope there that you know we, you know we can carry on and the games that are, 
are coming up as well before the international break. They are, you know, some of them are winnable. Starting with Barnsley, Barnsley on Saturday, who were, you know, just level with us, you know, both on eight points. We've, we've got to be thinking we've got a chance, but, um, you know, it's it's weird with Blackpool because you can't work it out because, you know, the, you know, you're looking at Fulham, Huddersfield, and Fulham at home, Huddersfield, and obviously Middlesbrough away. I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, you know, we're going to lose against Fulham. I think we might be able to, you know, on our day, we might just be able to beat Huddersfield. And if we could get a point away at Middlesbrough, is, is the way I was thinking. But, you know, looking at those three games and yet, you know, beat Fulham, lost to Huddersfield, beat Middlesbrough away. You just, you never really know, do you, with Blackpool, what's going to happen? So it's very hard to predict. You've just mentioned there, Lee, about, about Jerry Yates. You know, I don't think we've yeah. seen the best of him so far in no. the Championship. Has, has that surprised you? Um, Probably shadowing last season. We, we had the same sort of thing with him last season where... um. The, you know, if you look at the, our last season start and this season start, they're very, very similar. And Jerry Yates didn't get going, did he? You know, quite a few games, he, you know, he didn't get a goal. And then once once he got going, his confidence got up. Um, you know, he just went on and on from there. So hopefully, you know, if it can be a repeat of last season, he, he will start to come good when he finally gets that goal. He just needs a goal at the moment. He's he's had a penalty, but he's not actually scored a goal. And um I think he's a confidence player. I think it's all that, you know, I think, you know, a striker, it's all down to confidence and hopefully he'll get one soon. And uh, if he does, watch out, championship. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that maybe later in the season. I, I'm going to come to you you with, with this sort of last, last question of this segment, Tom. You know, looking back at the transfer window, sort of a simple question. Do, do you think that Blackpool have, have done enough to create a squad that's, you know, competitive enough to, to sort of stay in the championship and build on, on promotion last season? Uh, I didn't feel like that at the end of the window, just purely for the fact that we missed out on a on a central midfielder because we can't rely on Stewart staying fit, uh, Kevin Stewart, um, and we can't really potentially rely on Kenny Dougal to perform week in, week out, which we've seen um, Tuesday and then Saturday, which Saturday was fantastic, and Tuesday against um, Huddersfield, he was ridiculously far off of it. I don't want to put put mud on the King's name, but um, one one sign that I'm really impressed with is, is Wintle on loan from Cardiff. Um, he's been absolutely phenomenal since coming in. So those three central midfielders will work, um, but I don't want to be having Reece James come in. So we missed out on Brannigan from Oxford. Whatever happened there, we don't know, but maybe we get a free and I don't know, but one more central midfielder for me would have, would have gave me a lot more confidence, but this team is certainly good enough until January t- till we need to make our improvements. Right, that concludes this this segment of the of the fan takeover. Next up, we're going to look at what's what's coming up in the in the coming weeks. So, as we've touched on, it's been a, a really sort of good week for Blackpool. They've, they've picked up two wins uh, from from three fixtures, um, and now there's some really presentable fixtures coming up between now and November, in, including the likes of Barnsley this weekend. There's Hull City, Nottingham Forest, and Preston all on the agenda. I'll come to you, Lee. How crucial yeah. is this this burst either side of the October international break? Oh, it's very crucial. You know, we don't. You know, we really want to get away if we can from you know from the bottom of the table and get ourselves somewhere mid if we can. You know, so obviously looking at those fixtures, um, you know, the big one for every Blackpool fan is going to be Preston. Um, it's a long time since we've had our proper derby, as we call it, uh, not the little. Um, Derby with Fleetwood down the road. We don't really see as a derby. They're like our annoying little brother or something, Fleetwood. So it's the proper derby. And it's a game that every Blackpool fan is just kind of bursting for. But at the same time, you know, it's it's a fear in because Preston were looking, you know, they got off to a rocky start, but they're starting to get, you know, get their act together. So it's going to be a tough game. Barnsley just hoping, you know, just really hoping that that, that we can put back to back wins together because um we had the disappointment of you know beating Fulham and then you know Huddersfield coming and, and and the way the game went it was so disappointing because because everybody had said you know from Critch down to all, all the the message boards and everywhere where you read said that you know Blackpool have got to you know build on that win against Fulham and do something against Huddersfield and you know the feeling around the the fans boards and everything when we lost how we did to Huddersfield was you know. It's just not good, you know, if there was a lot of people complaining that he didn't stick with a winning side, you know, my dad would always say, you know, don't change a winning side. It's it's kind of a mantra and he, and he did. And uh, yeah, we were, I, I was very disappointed. So I, I would really like to back this 
Middlesbrough game up with a win on Saturday. I think that's, you know, it, the old mantra of one game at a time, you know, you, you can start looking at everything too far forward, but, but I think we've got to really get a win at home against Barnsley on, on Saturday and I think we can move on from there. Do you echo those thoughts, Tom? Is, is a win against Barnsley quite important this coming weekend? Uh, I think a win against any team at home is important in this league because we've got to make a home form count. Um, but for me, Barnsley, one of those sides, a bit like Huddersfield, a really experienced championship side with some quality in their team and they, they will make us punish if, if we're not at our game. So I expect to see us a bit better than we were against Huddersfield. And yeah, a win is very important. But if we find ourselves sort of 1-0 down and we nick a draw and, and the performance is decent and we continue that sort of premise of how we want to play, it's not going to be the end of the world. But on the flip side to that, I'd want four points from the next three games before the international break, which is what I wanted from Fulham, Huddersfield and, and Borough as well. How they come about is a complete opposite order, obviously, previously from, from beating Fulham and Borough. But um, I think if we can, you know, nick a point at home, beat Hull, and then the Blackburn game is going to be, you know, a very decent game. I think they're bringing about three and a half thousand. So it's going to be a very good atmosphere. And if we can get a goal early doors, you know, it's going to be quite lively. But if we can repeat the last three games, fantastic. But Lee's, Lee's spot on, really, like one game at a time with Critchley, and that's how I'll see it, you know, devastating loss against Huddersfield and an incredible second half against Borough just shows you what this team's all about. But, yeah, it, it's crucial in a way where we can't afford to lose three in a row, but if we picked up four points, it would be a decent return, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of like looking at the the short term now and, and the fixtures that are coming up. Let's let's just focus on on the season's aim as a, as a whole. I'll, I'll come to you here, Lee. What's What's your aim for the club this season? What do you want to see from them? Is it is it simply just survival? Um, well, I think that's got to be the initial, you know, that's got to be the initial thought. Just, you know, to survive would be great. To finish, so, you know, top half of the table, you know, above mid-table would be fantastic. Anything more than that is just dreaming, really. And, yeah, sorry, sorry I was talking about press, obviously, that's a, bit, a little bit later, but, you know, Blackburn Rovers is a really hard, you know, we never, you know, they're not a lucky team for us, Blackburn. They, they often beat us and they often have the hoodoo over us. So I'm not expecting anything from there. So I, I'm I'm the same as Tom there with about four points out of these would do me as well before the break. I would be going for the same. And yep, yeah, it's just, um, that's it really. It's um, just that sort of mid table, maybe, you know, possibly higher. Just don't want to be battling away at you know, the bottom of the league, and you know, you know, going down to the last game of the season, and you know, you know, in that position where you, you know, you, you're having to win. Don't want to be in that position if, if we can help it. So, so let's say mid mid table, and and for Blackpool to get to that sort of standard, Tom, do you think that anything drastic, you know, needs to change? You obviously mentioned the central midfielder earlier in in the uh, in the show. Is there anything else that, that you maybe feel? the club need to be doing in terms of the transfer window or a slight tweak in tactics or anything like that? No, I don't think we can ever question Critchley's tactics just based on how many times he proved us wrong last season. So for me, no, just a couple of additions to make the team strong. I'd like a, you know, it's hard to say, like a championship quality striker. Yates is going to score goals in my in my personal opinion and when Medine's back, it's going to be decent. But we can't rely again on free strikers as we can't rely on free midfielders. Some like Woodrow at Barnsley, um, not Barnsley, sorry, Woodrow, Callum Woodrow, who I wanted, um, like in the summer, that would be decent. Um, you know, someone like him who can add that quality to your, to your team. So um, maybe a striker and a central midfielder, but I think the team as a whole has got enough. If, if we if we, if everyone stays fit, we've got a couple of players to come back as well, like Dimitri Mitchell and et cetera. So not a lot for me, um, just just two, two or three more players come January just to bolster the squad and give us quality when players do come in. Yeah, that leads us very nicely into the, the final segment of the show and talking about Neil Critchley. This is something that I wanted to sort of discuss with with both of you, and and it's just about your manager Neil Critchley. I think he's done some really good things for the for the football club. He's, he's delivered you a, a championship return, and 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 for me, from my personal point of view, I really enjoyed sort of watching you through the playoffs last season. I thought it was it was really good, just everything combined with the atmosphere to the performances and every, and everything like that. You know, he's someone that on the website we've always spoken about in a really sort of high regard and, and and that kind of thing. I'll come to you, Lee, first. What what are your thoughts on, on Critchley? Um, 
Well, he was a strange one, wasn't he? He was, he, he was from sort of total left field appointment. We'd had a, you know, a couple of managers t- turned us down and um, all of a sudden, you know, they announced Neil Critchley as the manager and everybody was like, who? And, uh, you know, then um, on the message boards, Liverpool fans started coming on saying, oh my, you know, they're so upset. We've got Critchley, you know, they love him at Liverpool and he's kind of, you know, you know, he's been the under 23 coach and he's very highly respected there and some are wishing us good, you know, good things and it started off poorly um you know last season he, he didn't get off to a great start we had a great pre-season where we you know we played well against Everton we played really well against Liverpool first half you know beating Liverpool 2-0 at one stage and then we got beat 7-2 but he, you know he completely changed the team in the second half it completely just brought a lot of kids on and we got absolutely annihilated but um so you know a lot of people were doubting him on the on the forums and but he just seems to have that ability to, to, well, he's a great coach. I mean, that's the main thing. And the players, you know, that, that he has get better, you know, and they got better as the season went on. And by the end of the season, last season, Blackpool were by far the best team in the division, even though we got up in the playoffs, you know, if we'd have had a decent start to the season, we would have definitely got automatic because we were, we were, we were flying. And like you say, you know, you watch us play through the playoffs and we were, we were unbelievable. You know, we were, you know, we went to Wembley. It was one of those things where we were definitely, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that we were not, you know, going to win this game. We were, we were going to get promoted. And um, there's been a few, you know, at the start of this season, it's been a bit of a rocky start, you know, and a few fans on the forums, you know, saying, you know, Critchley out and all sort of stuff. But he, I, I I really like him. You know, I really, really like him. And I like the sort of the team spirit that's building. Uh, you, you know, you can see the players uh, together in this. And I think, you know, they seem to get rid of players that don't fit in with that thing where, you know, the players aren't playing and not causing problems. They seem to get rid of any sort of problem player. And I just think he's always looking to improve himself and improve the team. He's always writing notes. He's always, you know, you know, on his interviews, his interviews make sense. He's always talking about, you know, how how he's improving this and that, and the, you know, the whole thing, he, he, the, the whole vibe behind the club at the moment is improvement in in, in everything from the stadium to the, you know, to, to everything, probably to the tea lady, the sandwiches, the, the pies, everything uh, with Blackpool at the moment is is on the up. So I'm pretty happy with him, and I think he's a great coach. And um, it's like Tom was saying, you, you can't really second guess him because you don't know what he's going to do. And but he seems to do it, and you know we do seem to to get these results from nowhere. So hopefully, um, you know, in crutch in <laughs> in crutch, I trust. As a, that's it for me. I, th- I, th- I think he's a diamond. So any any. Any Blackpool fans tuning in, if you want to just comment your your thoughts on Neil Critchley and, and we'll get them we'll get them read out. So I suppose sort of same question to you, Tom. Your your thoughts on him? You've been very complimentary about him so far in, in the show. Yeah, King Critchley. Um I was one of the ones early doors last season, not to go into details, but when we were playing the football we were, I said if if the tie doesn't change, the manager probably will. Then we appointed Colin Calderwood. Um who I think gave us that defensive nous and gave him the ability to get league experience very quickly is a sort of character now he's doing really well at Northampton as well isn't he but he, he's so intricate with everything he does he's incredible for fan engagement he loves the fans he just he just gets it he just gets the fans and it was after Saturday he was just like give us give us your thoughts on the away fans and he just said it's getting embarrassed and every single week these guys just hear us on etc so he gets the fans he gets the club and he gets what it means to us and I think when you hear him speak um he's an inspiration for me and I couldn't uh, tell you who I'd want to replace him with because for me uh, he's he's gonna he's gonna see us survive and see us grow through the years along with Simon Sadler um he tweaks uh like he changes his tactics throughout the games or through he gets it wrong sometimes like he did against Huddersfield but he makes intricate changes where he changes the system slightly or he puts someone in a position or you know he changes two or three positions based on the opponents and for me you're not going to get that from many other coaches his research into the opponents is is out of this world and Mm -hmm. and and that's for me how he wins games and gets wins where we don't expect to get wins from um, and that for me is that level of research and the confidence he has in his players is is the reason we we're going to stay up in my opinion. We've had a we've had a comment yeah. in from S Mac fifty three. Critchley's yeah. main asset is his ability to tweak systems based on yeah, opponents' yeah, yeah. system over individuals. 
So he's, he's just echoing exactly what you've said there, Tom. Yeah. So final question for you both here. You know, how far is Critchley going to take Blackpool then? I'll come to you first, Lee. I think he's going to take us a long way, to be honest. I think there's um, that they're, they're building, uh, you know, something uh, at Blackpool. Uh, youth, you know, you know the youth side of things. The academy is he, he's into that, and I think he's he, he's all about getting young players and developing them and, in, and improving them, and you know, making them better players. And I just think he's got a model in his mind i think the club have a model on you know the way they want to go with things and i think he's sort of bought into it and i just think he can take us a long way i i really do i think he can get us back back to the premier league that's how confident i am with him and what about you what about you tom where, where are blackpool going under critchler exponential growth in the next few years i feel um i think with with who we've got behind the club i.e sadler and the team has got ben mansford etc i think the recruitment over Maybe in January next season, if we were to stay up, is going to be better. Um, and, and certainly, although we signed eight players early on, maybe proactive in terms of the quality. And I think, I think, give it two, three years, maybe we can build something really special. If we survive this year, we can build on it next year and just become a consistent championship side. And there's no reason why in the next few years we can be one of those sides challenging for the playoffs, a bit like Barnsley did last year. You know, really well-run club spending within their means and an incredible fa fan base um it's got all the nucleus to be something really special again at blackpool but hopefully this time with some sustain sustainability um so consolidation over the next few years and then push for the playoffs uh, you know maybe four to five years Right, that's it for the, the Blackpool fan takeover show. Thank you, Lee and, Lee and Tom, for joining me. I uh, hope you've hope you've enjoyed your Football League World TV debuts. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks for thanks for having thanks for having me. It's been great. No, I think yeah. we've had I think we've had some really good talk there. So so thanks to you both. Um, coming up today on on Football League World TV, we've got the uh, Peterborough fan takeover. A little bit of a fan takeover day with. Uh, Sam Rock joined by Alex Bat, I do believe. So that should be a good show. And, and any Peterborough fans that have, that have caught the back end of this, you know, please do tune in and uh, I'll see you again soon.